this, a cup of water, a paper towel, a large brush and a small brush. For your colors, you should have blue, green, and pink, and then your black and white. You do not have to pour out your colors like I did on mine, uh, but you will need to be mixing some colors later. So there's a wax paper provided and you can mix your colors on the wax paper. If you do not have all of those materials, not a problem. You're welcome to push pause on the video and come back to us whenever you're ready. So the first thing I'm gonna have everyone do is take both of their brushes. So you have to take both of your brushes, dip them in the cup of water, swirl them around, and gently pat them onto your paper towel. You never wanna go straight from water to painting on your canvas or your uh, paint will drip. So just be sure to pat your brushes mostly dry. Our first step is painting the sky blue in the background. We'll be taking our small brush and our blue paint, and just a little bit, make sure it's not dripping off of, our, uh, off of your brush. And we're gonna outline all the way around our mailbox and the grassy area. So let's just go ahead and start down here. I'm gonna start on the right side. And I'm gonna go just a little bit over the, those pencil lines over there to the right. It almost has the shape of an M. Then I'm gonna go to the right of this post right here. Nice long line. Keep it going until it's out of paint. And this will just let me know where to stop with my blue. Can always go back for a little bit more. I'm gonna go underneath the mailbox like so. So I'm just going to the right. Next I'll go underneath this kind of U shape for the door. And take your time. You're always welcome to push pause on the video and then come back to us when you're ready. And then we'll go over here to the right of the letters. We're gonna go above that heart shape. Be very careful not to drag your fingers over any wet paint. So we don't wanna go inside that space at all. Now we'll start working on the left side of our mailbox. Again, nice long lines. Be sure your paint is nice and smooth, no big bumps. You can always go over it with your brush to smooth it out. Now again, I'm working more on the left side. Then I'm gonna drag it down here. Bring it all the way to the left. Again, to the left side of the grass. And once you're done, you can just put your small brush to the side if you wanna use it kind of get into smaller little areas later, you can. But for the most part, we are gonna use our big brush and we're gonna paint all the space behind our mailbox. You can even use your big brush to kind of create a line right here. So you know not to go into the grassy area. But big brush, that same blue paint, make sure it's not dripping off of your brush. And you just wanna keep your brush moving in nice long motions going up and down. I do recommend two coats for this background sky, which means you paint it once, let it dry for a couple minutes, and go back over it a second time so you don't see these streaky lines as much. They'll be more of a solid, so you won't see any of those lines in the background. Be very careful to stay outside of the mailbox area.
those small areas and smooth it out. And I can go to the right side of this post. So I'm pretty much gonna be painting all this area right here, all blue. Avoid your grass patch and avoid your mailbox. I do go over my line that I made earlier just a little bit so I break it up. You don't see it. So it looks harsh. also be painting the four sides of my canvas in just a moment just so that all the sides look nice and clean again take your time Once you're done, you can start painting the four sides. That'll even give this front area some time to dry. I'm just painting side to side on the bottom. On the left side, I'll just kind of paint up and down. The right side, same thing. And paint up and down. And again, give the front area some time to dry and you can go back and do a nice second coat of that uh, blue. All right, and once you're done, you can go ahead and wash and dry your brush. If you want, you can get a new couple of fresh water. I'm gonna let mine dry. I'll do a second coat and I will come back in a couple minutes. And you can tell it's dry because uh, it's not gonna be as shiny anymore. So I'm gonna give mine a little bit more time to dry, give it a second coat, and then we'll continue on together. See you in a bit. All right, artists, once your background is dry, again, if you wanted to grab a new cup of water, you can, because we are gonna be going into our pinks. On your, uh, or with your package, you have a pink. Go ahead and grab your wax paper because you're gonna want your pink, a medium pink, and then a light pink. 
So you're gonna have three different pinks that you're gonna be using. And we're gonna be mixing um, our pink and our white to make the other two pinks. So the first thing I want you to do is again, be sure that your um, small brush is nicely washed and cleaned. You're gonna grab a scoop of pink and put it anywhere on your wax paper. And you're gonna grab a little bit of white and make a medium pink. So a scoop of each. Scoop of pink, a scoop of white. So now you have your original pink and now you have your medium pink. Now you wanna make a baby pink, so your lightest pink. You don't have to clean your brush. You can go back to that original pink. Just grab a corner of it. And you're gonna do two scoops of white. One, two, and this will be your lightest baby pink. And if you need to go back and add more pink to make it darker, more white to make it lighter, you can. But you wanna have your dark, medium, and your lightest pink. And once you're done creating your pinks, you can go ahead and wash and dry your small brush and take your time, go back and forth. Again, my recipe was one pink, one white, one pink, two whites. Then go ahead and wash and dry your small brush. Take your time with your mixing, no rush. Once you're done with your mixing, then you're gonna clean your small brush. You're gonna go to your dark pink, so the original one, and you're gonna paint the post all pink. Again, be sure that your background is nice and dry. You don't want any shiny spots. I'm just gonna go in there, and you can outline it on the left side, outline it on the right side, and then go in there and paint the pink. And I would definitely do two coats, maybe even three coats of this pink if you want it to be a little bit darker. But be sure you're staying between those two lines and keeping it nice and clean. So two, maybe three coats of this dark pink. Give it a couple minutes to dry before you go back over it. And I still have some white areas poking through here. Later on, I'll go in there and outline. So if you feel like the outline's gonna be covering that area, you're good. Or you can let this pink dry and go back close to it with some blue. Once you're done with that, you are gonna make a heart flower made from the same pink, so the same dark pink. And for your heart shape, you're gonna kind of think of it as the letter V. I'm gonna come up here over to the side above my grass and the heart's gonna be a little bit tilted, like a tilted flower. It's gonna be a little bit slanted. And I'm gonna make the letter V with my small brush. And then if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I can just go in there and push on my brush a little bit harder. You can even create more of a V point at the bottom. But just start out with that V shape with your brush and then slowly fill it in. You don't wanna to get too big. So start out small and then you can always get it a little bit bigger. And again, I would go back and give these another coat or two. So let those dry and go back to them. Once you're done, you don't even have to clean your brush. You're gonna to jump to your medium pink. So I'm gonna to jump to my medium pink and I'm going to paint, not this one that's off to the side, but this one right here that's above it, and again, kind of tilted. I'm gonna paint that letter completely with this medium pink. So just maybe wipe off some of the sides if you have big chunks of paint on there. And I'm gonna outline and fill in this letter right here with this medium pink. I also have this heart being a medium pink, so I can go back that same medium pink and completely fill in this heart. Like so. 
And then one more area with this medium pink. I'm gonna do another V shape, but of a medium pink on this right side. And again, I'm gonna start with the V shape and have it a little bit tilted, coming out to the right from my grass. And I'll give it a stem a little bit later, but I just wanna build my heart shape flower. So V shape, kinda go in there and fill it in like so. And once you're done with that, you can go into your lightest pink. You don't have to clean your brush and make a light pink flower down here to the left. Again, a little bit tilted, just a little bit. Start with that V shape and fill it in. And any of these pinks, you're welcome to go back and give it another coat, especially if you see blue poking through. You will use this light pink again for some hearts on these envelopes. So we'll be going back in a little bit once we get all of our envelopes um, painted. Ooh, excuse me, there is one more light pink. So you have this pink right here, and then this big letter over here is also a light pink. Sorry, I forgot about that. So two areas of light pink. This big letter, which I'm gonna outline almost looks like a backwards L, and this heart shape. This is gonna be a nice light pink. So one and two, and then later on we'll go in there and add some light pink hearts to the top right areas of our envelopes. And again, I would recommend going back and giving the, those a second coat. Take your time. No rush. And once you're done, you can go ahead and wash and dry your brush. Those are our dark pinks, medium pinks, and our light pink areas. Now I'm gonna give mine a minute to dry and I'm gonna give them a second coat and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, artists, we are back after our pink paint. And the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit tricky. So I do wanna make sure everyone's watching. We're gonna create like a bluish gray color. We're gonna be mixing again. We're gonna be using our small brush. So be sure you watch first and then you can kind of jump in. So I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush. I'm gonna get a scoop of blue I'm gonna grab another scoop of blue, so two scoops of blue with our small brush. I'm gonna grab a dot of black and a dot of white. And it's gonna become kind of like this grayish blue color. And if you want it to be lighter, you can add more white. If you want it to be darker, you can add a little bit more black, but a little bit of black or a little bit of white goes a long way. So I did two scoops of blue, a dot of black, a dot of white. I want mine to be a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more white to mine. Perfect. I think that's perfect. And I'm gonna wipe off the sides on my paper towel or my wax paper. And then I'm gonna continue to paint the letters. So I want this letter right here to be outlined and filled in with this new blue that I've made. And also underneath the heart right here, I'm gonna use that same mix to outline and fill in. Again, if you need to do two coats of those, you can. I feel like mine is okay the first time around. And I'm gonna go ahead and wash and dry my brush. The next thing I'm gonna do is finish off the next letter, which is this one right here, which is gonna be green and white. So you are gonna be mixing again. Take your time with the blue mix, and once you're ready, go ahead and take a scoop of green and a scoop of white onto your wax paper and make a nice light green.
If this letter underneath it is still too wet, wait a little bit, maybe a minute, and then you can paint the envelope above it, this nice light green mix that you've made. But again, I'm gonna outline and fill in so I keep my lines nice and clean. If you'd like to do two coats, you can. Perfect. Go ahead and wash and dry. The next thing I'm gonna do is use my white paint. And you can jump back and forth between your small brush and your big brush, but I'm gonna stick with my small brush. I may go to the white paint, find a nice clean area. You don't have to mix this white with anything. It's just white on its own. And I'm gonna paint this last envelope right here with white paint. And I'm gonna outline and fill in, make sure the pinks next to her are nice and dry. Fill it in nicely, make sure all those bumps are gone. Getting it nice and smooth. I'm also gonna use my white paint, nice clean white, nice clean brush. I'm gonna outline the door of my mailbox by outlining and filling in. Oh, excuse me. Remember, you can jump to your big brush if you want, but I'm gonna stick with my small brush. That just makes the white a little bit brighter than the white from your canvas. And I'm also gonna go back to more white. And this will clean up this area too. So let's say you got a little bit of blue or pink inside this space, that white paint will just white it out. Again, be sure everything next to it is nice and dry. So it's gonna be this area and this area. Do not go into that area or that area. So not the inside of the mailbox, just the outside. Outline and fill in. Okay. Have a shaky hand today. And if you do jump to your big brush, make sure it's really, really clean. You can even wrap it around with your paper towel and get new fresh water, but you definitely wanna make sure your brush is nice and clean. Your paint is nice and clean. And you can use your small brush or your big brush to fill in the mailbox space. Moving my brush more up and down. You can use your small brush to get into smaller areas. I'm gonna grab this paint while it's wet. It's a nicer, brighter white on your mailbox. Back and give those a second coat if you need. Go ahead and wash and dry, and you're done. So it looks like I had one, two, three areas with the white. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my small brush. So just make sure you're Small brush is nicely washed and dried. Sorry about that, the phone rang him at the studio today, but uh, let's continue on. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is take our nicely washed and dried small brush, and we're gonna jump back into that limey green color. But it's just gonna be on its own. You don't have to mix it with white. And I'm gonna start at the points. And I'm just gonna sweep down, definitely making sure I go over that blue line, because I don't want to see that blue line anymore. And our green seems pretty thin, so I would go back and give it another coat so you cover up the blue a little bit more. We'll go in there with a the black outline a little bit later, so you won't be seeing the pencil lines. 
So again, I would recommend to go back and add a little bit more of a coat to this green. While we have this green on our brush, we're gonna add some floating leaves to our heart flowers, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So take your time, just kind of sweep down. So just kind of flicking your brush and completely fill in this whole grassy area. Go over that blue a little bit. But once you are done with the grassy area, you're gonna take that same lime green, maybe pat some off onto a paper towel. You don't want too much on there, but you're gonna create some leaves. Later on, we'll go in there and create black lines for the stems and the outline. But for this red heart right here, I'm just gonna push down on my small brush, almost like a little stamp, and make a leaf going to the left, maybe a little bit higher up, push my small brush and make another little leaf stamp. And I'm gonna go a little bit further down, do the same to the right of the pink. Oops, excuse me. So I have one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go off to the right. I'm gonna make one this way, and then one kind of coming up the other way. And again, two coats will make these look a little bit brighter. If they got too big, you can always build your black outline on them later, or you can wait for them to dry, and then just kind of add a little bit of that blue we use in that background. Perfect. All right, and then once you're done, you can go ahead and wash them dry. Your small brush. Before we start using our black outline, we are gonna start adding some hearts onto our envelopes. And we're gonna be using our baby pink, our baby pink color. So let me show you how, and they're all the same kind of idea. On the top right, there's gonna be a small heart. So small brush, light pink. So this is our baby pink that we made. Make sure there's just a little bit on there because this is a small heart. And I just kind of make the shape of a V again there's my first one, and there's my second one, there's my third one. And they're again all kind of close to the top right, fourth one. And if you can't see the baby pink on the baby pink envelope that we made earlier, you can always add a little bit of white the mix make sure that you see it but I think I'll be okay but let me double check I think I should be okay with mine but all of those have a little bit of a or excuse me a little baby pink heart in the corners and again you can go back and give them a second coat to make them pop a little bit more once you're done with that you can go ahead and wash and dry your small brush The next thing, when you're ready for it, we're gonna fill in this space and this space underneath with black. Again, I'm gonna use my small brush, Ooh. my black paint. Black paint looks like it's running off of my palette. So let me make sure, super careful. Make sure everything around it is nice and dry. But again, I'm just gonna outline the space right here. And then I can go in there and fill it in with my small, or if you want with your bigger brush, just be very careful. Go over your line a little bit so you don't see that harsh outline. Again, two coats if you'd like. Just give the black paint a couple minutes to dry before you go and give it a second coat. small space underneath it as well. Just 
And while you're um, doing all these black outlines, just be very aware of your arm not smearing any of the black. So just be very careful. We're gonna wear, work our way up, down, so we don't get any black um, as we're kind of leaning our hands um, if they do touch the canvas. All right. And this is where everything starts coming together. Black outline really helps a cartoony image. It helps it pop a little bit more from the background. And if you want, you can always take your a small brush, dip into the water, bring it to a nice twist. You can go back for more black if you need or if you already have black on there. It's totally fine. Be sure there's not too much water on there, uh, then the, the paint will spread. So be sure to pat it on your paper towel about five or six times before you make it official. But I'm gonna go ahead and start. Be very careful of your arm. Start outlining the heart shape. mine into water sorry about that I've used this brush a lot so it's having its last day <laughs> excuse me Outline the post underneath it. So pretty much everywhere that I saw the pencil line earlier, I make this line underneath. Again, nice long lines. The harder you push, the thicker the lines become. So be sure you're just on the tippy toe and push down to make a little dot at the end of that post. And it's just gonna start from the top up here. Drag that brush until it's out of paint. Bring it on over. Drag that brush, bring it down, do it the opposite way if you want. Just want to make sure all your lines are nice and smooth. Brush got a little bit dry again, bring it to a nice point. even create an outline right here to the left and all the envelopes and even the hearts are outlined excuse my wobbly hand so pretty much where we see that pencil line from before is where we're gonna to do our outline I'm gonna give my hearts a little bit extra time to dry because I see some are still shiny. So I'm gonna work my way down here. You see that I'm kind of using my pinky as leverage, but go ahead and lean on your elbow more if you need to. So you do want a nice steady hand to make nice long lines. There's a little swirl down here to kind of connect to the top of the mailbox. So I'm just gonna make a little swirl, kind of like a J shape, it's a little hook. I'm gonna work my way down the right side of the post. Keep it going, keep it going. a little bit wet again. Bring it to a nice twist. Do a little bit more black and a little bit of paint goes a long ways and again just be sure you're on the tippy toes of your brush so you have nice thin lines. I have a little bit of a heavy hand so my lines come out a little bit thick but that's okay. 
on the top part of the grass area, I'm gonna outline where I see the pencil. So the top part. I'm going to outline around the heart shapes, make sure they're dry. Once I'm done, I'm gonna connect the heart shapes to the grassy area. So I'm gonna take this one, be careful of your, uh, your leaf. So I'm just gonna connect it. I'm gonna connect, and it could be anywhere. Be careful of your leaves. Just turn it just a little bit. Maybe like this, and just curve it just a little bit. And then you can start outlining the shape your leaves and connect them and connect them with a little bit of a line or just kind of carry the line a little bit further down Come to a point at the end of those. So the next part is absolutely optional. So if you feel like you like your flowers the way they look, go for it. But I'm gonna show you how to add some swirls in your grassy area. So I'm gonna take my small brush, bring it to a nice twist. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black. Wipe some off. So a little bit too much. I'm gonna twist it a little bit more. I'm gonna add some swirls around my flowers and I'm really scared of like big swirls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make dashes, which are like little lines. I'm gonna bring them down and then cross them and then bring them back up. So those dashes kind of help me figure out a little bit better the direction I'm going so I don't have to worry about making long lines because now I can go in there and connect them and not worry about going too fast on those. Same thing to the other side. I'm gonna come up, come down, come back up. I'm going to put my swirl in and then I can go back and connect those dashes. So just little short lines to kind of help me control a little bit the direction that I want to go, kind of plan it out a little bit and then I can go in there and connect them. Black tends to get really dry, especially when we're doing all that line work. So I do find myself going back to my water a lot and really getting my brush nice and pointy. You can even do some swirls off of the flowers. So let's say I wanna come up, I'm gonna kinda of come down like that and go in and connect those lines and take your time. You can make a longer swirl, wrapping around this one and then coming back up. 
and connecting it. A little bit of swoop at the end where it curves in. Make another one up here. Swooping down, your curls in, and you connect them. Kind of mess with this one a little bit more. Get it cleaner. Clean up this area before I move on from it. All right. And last but not least, we are going to outline these hearts. Be sure they're just on the tippy toes. If your black's not dark enough, you can go back and give it another coat. always go back and touch things up just be very aware of wet colors so if you have a wet color that touches another wet color it's gonna mix and if you don't want it to just give it some drying time where your paint isn't so shiny and then you can build back on top of it if down here you don't love what happened you can always add a heart on top you can add a leaf on top um, just kind of work with it you can um, add some blue around it once it's nice and dry but don't feel like it has to be perfect the first time. You can always go back and kind of touch things up as well. Otherwise, your Valentine's mailbox is all done. Thank you so much, artists, for joining us. Sorry about the wobbly table, <laughs> uh, but hopefully we will see you soon. Have a great day.